part, the very exciting part, is how do we get into these programs? We have uh, Professor Mohammed Shab uh, Shadab Khalil, Associate Professor from Marketing in the Department of International Business Management School in National Donghua University. Professor, are you with us online? Yeah, hello, yeah, I'm with you. Thank you for sharing with us how to write a meaningful statement of purpose and research proposals. I believe this will be very fruitful for all our students online right now. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. So uh, shall I start with the presentation? Yes, sure. All yours. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'll be talking about how to write meaningful statements of purpose uh, for your research proposals. Uh, is my voice clear? And the PPT? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So I will be talking about uh, how to write research proposals, the problems that we face when we receive uh, research proposals from students and their statements of purposes. And uh, uh, let's begin with that. Now, uh, a bit of background for uh, from my side. Uh, I completed my bachelor's from the Jawaharlal Nehru University from the Chinese department and came to Taiwan for my master's. Uh, quit, or you can say not quit, but I actually transferred to PhD during my master's. Completed and then uh, started working as an assistant professor uh, at National Tunghua University, which you can see on the right side in the picture. It's a beautiful place to study. Now. If you talk about Taiwan, I mean, it's a small island nation, as you can see here, just to give you a perspective, if you are not uh, already aware. And uh, I'll why I'm showing this map, I'll talk about it later. Now, what is a statement of purpose? What is its importance? Now, one thing that uh, students miss is that why they are writing it. There is a lot of confusion, uh, which which apparently is there because we feel that when we receive your letters, when we receive your application material, we see that the students, a lot of students do not understand why they are writing this uh, statement of purpose. Now, we need to understand that it's a window into your motivations, aspirations, and objectives. Why do you want to come to Taiwan? Why do you want to study at a specific university? Why do you want to study or pursue a specific program? And it is the most important factor, deciding factor about your admission after your grades that we see. So there are certain uh, mistakes that uh, students make. Some are simple ones like formatting and length, and others are more serious like content. So I'll talk about these one by one. Now, in terms of format, uh, you have to be careful uh, about how you present your statement of purpose. Now, what usually happens is that a lot of students do not pay attention to this. Okay? For instance, in the example that I have given here in the picture, you can see that you have two phones uh, in, that the student has used to write. I mean, this is just an example. So be consistent in what font you are using. Be consistent in the size of the font. Be careful about uh, uh, grammar, punctuation, capitalization, and these things. Because if you are, if you do not do that, it it diverts our attention to these small things, and that may lead to a negative perception about your uh, attitude towards your work, your attitude towards your your studies, and that is seen as a negative. Another example here uh, is uh, when a lot of students apply not only at one university, you apply at several universities, right? At one time, let's say that a student applies to five, six university. For each university, for each program, you need to write a unique statement of purpose. Of course, there are, there are going to be things that you're going to write in all of them, but be careful uh, to which university you're submitting, which one. A lot of times we receive statement of purpose in which Instead of uh, our university's name, some other university's name is mentioned. This is a mistake when ha it happens that you upload the wrong file or you upload the same uh, statement of purpose to all university websites for, with your application material. So you have to be careful. This, this looks very bad. 
Because when you're reading and then, okay, you're applying at the Department of International Business and the name is not National Tonghua University, which is our university, uh, and the, there's some other name. That shows carelessness and it, it is seen as a very negative thing. Now, this is another example and this is actual, uh, this is not written by me. This is an actual statement of purpose received from, sadly, India. Okay. So if, if you can read it, it's, hello, I'm coming to Taiwan, study. How much can you give scholarship? Tell me how much money. Okay. This is an actual example, not typed, written on a piece of paper. But um, this is not, it has nothing to do with your statement of purpose, your study plan. So this is a not so common mistake that we see. This is not common. I won't say that this is uh, generally what happens. This is rare, but this happens. And uh, I would say that this is because of uh, a lack of, uh, we can say, understanding about what a statement of purpose is, a lack of understanding about what you're trying to achieve through it. And uh, this results into these kinds of mistakes. You can see another example. Now, this, was, this is just a replication of uh, an application that was received. Uh, the original one was not available, so just, uh, I mean, to hide the name and other things. It has been written by a student, but you can see a uh, similar kind of problem. Uh, in here, there are two things that you, you, you're going to notice. One is that it's handwritten. That's not acceptable at all. The other is that why do you want to come here? If it's handwritten, it's not something that would be like make your admission or application material uh, ineligible. That's not the case. But you see, the purpose of coming here, the purpose of applying here, it's not clear, it's not the right purpose, I would say, and that would lead to rejections. So what can we do? What can you do to make things better? Now, formatting, as I said, it's one of the major uh, problems that we come across. Uh, not a deciding factor, but it makes it easier to read your proposals and also to grab attention. So be careful when you're writing. Try to follow some of the points that uh, we discuss here, like the font. Any widely used font, such as Times New Roman, Calibri, or Arial would do. Size 12 point is standard that is used across Taiwan for uh, writing and across the world for, uh, for that matter. Don't capitalize or use italics or bold when it's not necessary. When you're trying to stress a point, capitalization, making text bold, or italics is not required. Okay. Spacing, in terms of spacing between the lines, you can use 1 or 1.5 to give you more space. Your text would be justified both on left and right, as the example uh, given here. That leads to more of a consistent or uh, pleasant-looking document. Now, these, as I said, and these are small things that they, they do not matter much, but they take your uh, proposal from good to being much better. Now, uh, in terms of length, how much should you write? Uh, if, if you're able to I mean, present your study plan, your statement of purpose within uh, one and a half page or one page at the most, uh, that is considered to be a good uh, length of statement of purpose. Now, if you're writing a lot, uh, you see, we receive uh, tons of applications, okay? And we are interested and we want to uh, go through each and every application in detail. So if, you, if it's too long, it's going to uh, like uh, become, you can say, a kind of uh, like heavy on the reader. And uh, we might not want to pay that much attention. So you should be able to present what you want to say. You should be able to convey what you want to say in one or one, uh, one and a half pages at most. And that's the standard that we would expect from uh, applications. Now, coming to the most important part, the content. What should you write? Okay. Now, you should start with study and work background in the short opening paragraph. Always give a heading. Okay. Give a heading that, okay, I mean, you're starting, this is your statement of purpose. Uh, without head, without, I mean, documents without heading do not look good. They're not appealing. So you can always give a heading, a statement of purpose, or your study plan. Start with a short paragraph talking about what you have studied so far, if you have worked before, what is your experience, what is your work background, and this should be kept to 
like let's say around 100 120 words then we move on to why do you want to pursue the program any program that you want to pursue in this you would talk about things like uh, you, and you have to relate it with you, what you have studied and what is your work background let's say that for instance some students would write that okay i've studied uh, chinese language okay and after studying chinese language i would want to expand my career and pursue masters in business administration or international business and we i'm going to do that so that i can expand my career i can uh, uh, join the workforce in the world learn the language uh, per, make it better and combine these two skills that is the knowledge of chinese language mandarin and the understanding of business to pursue my career now saying that okay i mean i, I just want to come to taiwan because uh, I want to expand my language horizon or just want to learn Chinese, that's not going to cut very well with the committee. Because then it means that you're, start, you're coming not for the program itself, not for masters in, for instance, uh, uh, business, you're coming for your language uh, improvement. So that is a kind of orientation that is not considered very well. So talk about how you study your work, work background would help you pursue the program what would you achieve after you graduate from the program? So you have to connect uh, what you have studied and what you have worked before to what you are going to do in the future. A lot of uh, students, applicants talk about when they were born, was it a, if it was a rainy or sane, a sunny day, in which city. Now these things look good in autobiography. Okay, so you should keep your life stories. You should keep these things for your autobiography. Uh, in statement of purpose, it has to be very to the point and professional. Okay. Now, not so important reasons to study in Taiwan. I mean, if you if you talk about these things, you may have like the committee rejecting your application. Like uh, instead of focusing on the program that you're coming for, uh, talking about that you want to learn Mandarin, you want to learn about the culture, uh, you want to talk about. I mean, you want to visit new countries. That's your hobby or you want to enjoy local food, or you have fascination with the culture like Kung Fu movies and all. Now, these are good reasons, okay? Mm -hmm. These are uh, good reasons. Of course, you come to a country, you have to experience the entire culture, the entire package. But that's not your primary reason. Your primary reason is to come here and pursue your master's, for instance, in, in, in business. So you have to keep that in mind. Talk about these things, of course. Talk about culture. Talk about uh, your interest in Taiwan, your interest in uh, I mean, the culture, the food, everything. But that should be a short paragraph, uh, maybe in uh, I mean, in the end, so that uh, that you can connect the overall structure. I mean, with with I mean your your interests. Uh, and when we talk about interests, it should be about your work, study and work interests, not your hobbies. Okay. Because these things do not uh, um, let us judge your capability. These things do not let us understand your, your attitude. Now, after that, you need to talk about why Taiwan for pursuing the XYZ program. And you have to understand one very important thing. Taiwan is not China. Okay, uh, We have received uh, a lot of statement of purposes in which students talk about that China is a going, growing country. It's a very important country in the world. And then that's why we want to come to Taiwan. Now, uh, you, need, you have to understand that China is a separate country, okay? There may be ambiguity uh, in terms of uh, how things are seen, but even if you, uh, whatever you feel, whatever you think, you have to keep in mind that Taiwan is different from China. So when you're talking about uh, your interest in coming and seeing the Chinese culture, if you're talking about, I mean, exp I mean like joining the workforce of Taiwan or the industrious country of Taiwan, you have to keep in mind that it's not China. Okay. And these things, it's, 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 uh, we would say that it's a lack of understanding a bit about geopolitics, I would say. And also because it, it can be confusion as well, because Taiwan is officially known as Republic of China. But China is a different country. And uh, talking about its economic development, it's not going to help you with the getting into any Taiwanese university. So you have to talk about Taiwan's growth, uh, how Taiwan is an Asian tiger, how it has uh, developed into an industrial nation with uh, such high capacity for production. Okay. 
and how Taiwan is a place where you can study. So you have to narrow it down. Talk about your work background. Come to why you want to, uh, I mean, come to Taiwan. Why would you want to study at a chosen university? You see, there are a lot of universities in Taiwan, but the choice of which university you like are applying to, you have to justify that. Why should we take you? Why should we uh, entertain your application? Now, and that goes for all universities, all the committees, all the professors that are in attendance in this uh, uh, wonderful uh, online program today. You would know that uh, we need to understand why we should take students. And uh, we are eager to take Indian students. We want to take more and more Indian students. We want to take students uh, and, and get them into the workforce of Taiwan for the development of both countries. But you have to justify why you want to take admission in a certain program, how you are suitable. And at the same time, you would also need to uh, explain that how you are going to benefit us. Okay? Because you as a student, we, uh, we are providing education, but we cannot do anything without you. You are the students. So how are we going to benefit from you? And you have a lot to offer, right? In terms of uh, uh, creating diversity, creating a, a kind of uh, skill set uh, in every program that you come in. So you, you have to also talk about how would a university or a program benefit when they take you. And these are the things that we usually discuss in statements of purpose. And uh, uh, the more uh, you can write this with a flow and thinking that you're writing a debate in terms of that or write in a way that you're trying to convince uh, the committee, the, the better it is for us. So write in first person, include headings and your signature, uh, keep your life stories and uh, those wonderful things about your life, past background and all those for autobiography. Okay. Now, uh, for research proposals, I won't discuss much, but uh, because for at the master level in business and management areas in Taiwan, uh, we usually don't have research proposals. Those are for PhD. And but in general, if you're writing a research proposal, uh, the general subparts that one should include would be introduction, background, research gap, importance, contribution of the topic, a uh, bit of literature review, the research questions that you would want to address, and in the intended research methods. So that would be all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. I hope this is a very, this is a very useful session for all our students, especially ones who first apply abroad. And uh, we have a quick question for you, Professor. Uh, do you think what well, we are, one of our audience is asking, uh, do you think the fluency in Mandarin will affect their application, and if they hold a certification, uh, HSK-5 or the Taiwan TOCFL certificate in Mandarin language, would that be helpful during the application process? Uh, not necessarily, because uh, for instance, if you're applying at the National Tunghua University International uh, De Business Department or any of the management departments here, uh, we have fully English programs. Right. So all the courses are taught in English uh, by all, all the professors. So, uh, of course, I mean, your language skills, your, your knowledge of Mandarin is going to help you a lot uh, if you are interested in getting a job here. And frankly, I mean, actually, it's, it's very difficult to get a job if you do not speak uh, Mandarin, in, at least in the field of management. For sciences, it's, it, it, it's different. But in the field of management, because you need to get in the, into, into a company, you have to interact with all the employees there and with uh, I mean the, the consumers. So you have to have Chinese skill. But if you, have, uh, if you are proficient in uh, the language, you can also take classes that are offered in uh, Mandarin. You can also take courses there. Uh, that would give you more uh, options. But uh, for studying only, uh, not required at National Tunghua University, Department uh, Management School, the entire program is entirely in English. Thank you very much. So I believe in management, a lot of programs are conducted in English and therefore um, having a, a skill in ma Mandarin doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, for, for studying, for getting a job, of course, you will need. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 of course. Thank you for sharing with us, Professor. Thank you for Thank being you with much. us today.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much Thank for the you. opportunity. Thank and you. Um, for those who are asking about Mandarin um, ability, most of the university uh, will require you to study Mandarin if you want to apply for certain scholarship. So that is for you, to, that is to help you to get um, better with your life living in Taiwan since Mandarin is still the mainstream language. And for those of you who wish to elect courses in Mandarin, then of course Mandarin a language, having a certain skill, a certain proficiency in language would be very helpful. Other than that, we have a lot of English programs that will uh, allow you to study in business management. And in our next session,